for every argument, you can say that you can drive culture remotely. You can hold people accountable remotely with all the project management tools. You can see exactly what people are doing and how they get in the work done. A substantial number of accountants prefer remote work. They are resistant to returning to the office full time. So if you're willing to embrace those people and weave them into your workforce and not force them to come into an office, where is the talent shortage? Is it time to rethink the workplace for accounting firms? There's a mandate to return to the office. I'm Rob Brown. This is the Accounting Talent Podcast. Let's dip into this question. Have we seen the death of remote work as companies are demanding employees return to the office, or is this a short-sighted reaction to a changing workforce? There's been a few news stories recently, so we're going to dive into this topic. Solo episode from me, my co-host, Jeff Phillips, is going to be back next week. So yes, this is a hot topic. It's causing waves across industries worldwide. This push for companies to get their staff back into the office, tech giants, Dell, IBM, even Intuit, other big players, they're making headlines for their attempt to reverse the remote working trend. The pandemic's over, let's get everybody back in. But how is this playing out? And what does it mean for the accounting profession? Well, let's go to some real life examples here. Dell recently made the headlines with its plan to force workers back into the office the reaction from their employees was less than enthusiastic. According to many reports, their employees didn't. They, they didn't want to come back to work. Uh, half of them, 60,000 of them, they had 130,000 employees, something like that. Half of them didn't want to come back. And they're trying to say to them, if you don't come back, you won't be considered for, mo for promotion. You won't be considered for pay rises, for those interesting jobs. Obviously, the employees felt a huge amount of satisfaction. Uh, a, a frustration, dissatisfaction. They keep going back to the comfort and efficiency that they find in remote work. Everything is on hand for them. IBM, similar backlash. Fast Company reported that they tried to reverse the remote work policy. This U-turn that's coming out in a lot of companies, it makes significant resistance. Employees are willing to forgo promotions, career advancement, pay rises to maintain this work from home status. So the trends reshaping the way work is going right now give us a very clear message flexibility work-life balance offered by remote work that people have had a taste of in the pandemic they don't want to give it up they don't want to go back to the commute and, and let's have an extra dimension here if i'm being slightly cynical many of the leaders partners people at the top that are wanting to people to come back in they're the ones generally with the shortest commutes they can afford houses closer to the office. They've often got the nicest cars, the big plush offices. They've got lots of reasons to come back to work. And uh, the people that have long commutes, long train rides, the cars that are not so good, they can't afford to live close to the office. That's a long way for them to go. It's a lot for them to give up. And it's many different firms. According to a recent article on startup.co.uk, revealed 10 big UK companies please apply to the country of your choice that are facing similar pushback as workers are prioritizing comfort and mental well-being, convenience, the ability to balance their professional and personal lives. There's a lot going on. Uh, and they're forgoing traditional office perks to maintain those things. And the trend is shaping the world. So why are companies pushing for this return? What is behind their thinking? I mean, it looks flawed now looking at the backlash, but very important people, very smart brains have got together and said, let's get everyone back to work and this is the way we're going to do it. So what is their rationale? Well, there is a belief that in-person collaboration, having people in the office, rubbing shoulders, swapping ideas, it boosts creativity and innovation. There might be something to be said for that. Some leaders have said that physical presence enhances team dynamics, facilitates better communication. They also cite Managing remote teams is harder. It, trackability is harder. Accountability is harder. Seeing what people get up to is harder. And the ultimate argument is how do we maintain company culture if people are not in the office? So all of these have some merit, but not the overwhelming merit, not enough merit, because for every argument, you can say that you can drive culture remotely. You can hold people accountable remotely with all the project management tools. You can see exactly what people are doing and how they get in the work done. My co-host Jeff Phillips and I on this Accounting Talent Podcast have recorded some episodes on this. How do you manage a remote workforce? 
And why is it so much better that you do that than drag them back into the office? Yes, physical presence is great. I completely understand. That's why hybrid is there. It doesn't have to be 100% remote. It doesn't have to be 100% in the office. So let's relate this to the accounting profession in a moment. But the responses from the employees are telling us that the benefits of remote work far outweigh any advantages because they've tasted freedom, they've tasted autonomy, they've tasted flexibility, they've tasted work on their terms. They're reluctant to return to the old ways. Uh, and what about the tech you've got in your firm? Uh, I'm working from home right now. I'm looking at three screens. I've got all my devices here, all my paperwork here. I've got the bathroom when I need it. I've got a fridge with everything in it that I like. If anything happens with my kids or I get a delivery, I can take it. All of these things, forget the commute. So yeah, they've tasted freedom. They've tasted working from home. They're, they're reluctant to return to the old ways and who can blame them. And they resist that commute, that stress. Uh, they talk about increased productivity. I mean, that is an argument, isn't it? But I can do so much more when I'm working from home and I, I'm getting paid to do it. So I've got everything here. I can manage my personal life more effectively. I get everything done. So what does this bring us to the accounting profession, particularly the US and the UK, where most of our listeners are? Well, they're grappling with the same dilemma. Many big firms and small firms that are considering bringing their staff back to the office, but they're facing significant similar challenges. Accounting Today did a survey that revealed that a substantial number of accountants prefer remote work. They are resistant to returning to the office full time. Jeff Phillips on the show with Accounting Fly, he said, we have a thousand resumes coming to us every week from accountants, just US-based, that are open to remote working. And he says, if you embrace remote working, you don't have a talent problem. So if you're willing to embrace those people and weave them into your workforce and not force them to come into an office, where is the talent shortage? So are we saying here we've got a shift? Possibly. Uh, professionals are recalibrating their work environment. They've shown in many industries that the work product is just good. The client relationships and interaction can be just as good with people working from home. So for accounting firms that are contemplating this brave move to bring everyone back to the office, some recommendations for you. Number one, evaluate the necessity of bringing people back. Is it absolutely mandatory? It might be done on a person by person function by function basis. We've all got different jobs, different roles, different responsibilities. Is it truly necessary for an in-person presence in all roles? And if you do have that kind of policy, do you have to apply it to everybody? Some functions might benefit more from being remote or hybrid. Hybrid is the best of both worlds, obviously. Number two, second recommendation for you is Whatever you decide to do, communicate it transparently. Uh, be really open about it. We've had horror stories about this news, this call to arms, get back into the office coming out in all different ways. So engage in an open dialogue with your employees. We've had a recent episode of this Accounting Talent podcast on the power of surveying your employees and asking them how it's going and what they need to do their work and and how they're feeling about things. So Understanding their concerns, their preferences, getting a feel for what the reaction might be before you launch any edict to come back to work. And, and that will manage the gap between the management's expectations and the employee's needs. Number three, offer flexibility. If the return to the office is necessary, th there's a lot of different ways to get people to return to the office. Hybrid models, staggered schedules, remote work days. Lots of ways of carving that up. Number four, enhance remote work support. The tech is so important. There's accounting tech and there's work tech. There's so many good tools now, so many ways to meet, collaborate, run projects, do checklists, deal with clients. There's so many ways to do that now remotely. So invest in the tools, invest in the resources, invest in the, the emotional and mentoring support remotely. It can all be done so that all employees feel included and valued and part of the brand. And number five, we said to leaders, focus on the outcomes and shift the focus from, from hours worked to work done and outcomes achieved and measure performance more on results than a physical presence. It's not necessary in today's day and age. And a message too for accounting professionals that might be facing pressure to return to the office. What are you gonna do now? What's at stake for you? 
So it's important that you communicate your value. So highlight how productive you've been, the contributions you've made, the relationships you've got all while working remotely. You might be a leader. So how are you managing your team remotely? How are you keeping them accountable? How are you driving culture? How are you setting good examples? And, and any data examples you've got to support your case, then that strengthens your position to, to work how you like. Second thing is, is to propose solutions. So they might, your management might come to you with, this is what, how we want it done. But if you want to make the case for something else, don't just say, I don't want to do that, but say, here's what I propose and let's try this and see if it works. So this is going to meet your needs, the firm's needs. It's going to meet my needs. Let's at least trial this and see if it works and decide on criteria that you're going to measure that by. And number three, recommendation for employees being asked or demanded to come back to the office is, is be open to a compromise. Show your willingness to adapt and flexibility. It's a buzzword, isn't it? You want to maintain your work-life balance. They want you back in the office. Where's the, a little bit of movement on both sides. So yes, compromise, a win-win. Fourth is invest in your skills. So I talk in, in my book, I'm holding it up here for the video, build your reputation. This is on Amazon. It's a book with Wiley, the business publishers. And in that, I talk about career capital, which is what you build up to trade for work on your terms. So if you've got great skills, if you've got a great network, if you've got wonderful expertise, if you're very, very valuable in the talent marketplace, your firm will do everything they can to want to keep you and give you work on your terms. So invest in your skills, keep them updated and Technological skills, technical skills, selling skills, persuasion skills, presenting skills, people skills, regardless of where you work, your skills keep you relevant and they keep you competitive. And this is above any CPE, CPD, technical qualifications, which keeps you in the game. And the fifth thing I'd say to you is prioritize your well-being. Without your physical or mental health, nothing else in life has much flavor. So that's got to be a priority for you and ensure that any work arrangements supports you, your family, your health, your happiness, your well-being, because when that goes, all your relationships, your inter, inter your interaction is the word I'm looking for with clients, that suffers, doesn't it? So handling a hybrid workforce, you leaders, you, you, you've got to avoid the one-size-fits-all policy. You've got to get the technology going for you. You've got to foster a strong culture wherever it is. You've got to provide training and support. You've got to listen to your employees. The jury's back in on this one. Jeff Phillips has a lovely phrase. He said, the talent war is over and talent won. So if talent is a battleground, and we all know that any firms with growth aspirations need to increase headcount and increase capacity, and above all, you need to retain the staff that you've already got. So pushing them to return to the office, it, it's complex. I completely get that. I met with a firm just recently. I was chairing an international accounting conference, and he said, our policy is that everyone that joins us comes to the office. Fine. If you can do that, if you can drive that strong culture, if you've got enough people in the talent pool that are geographically close enough to come into the office every day, great. There might not be enough accountants around where your firm is based. Uh, but this is a time for, for mediation, for diplomacy, for harmony, for finding the common ground and recognize all of us that the future of work in, in accounting everywhere is being redefined. Those that embrace flexibility, compassion, innovation, technology, they will survive. They will thrive. They will stay relevant. They'll stay competitive. If your firm wants to stay independent, great. That will help you do that. If your firm is looking for private equity or, or some kind of M&A, then that's going to help you too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. This is the Accounting Talent Podcast. I'm Rob Brown. If this is a show that you're interested in sponsoring and getting out to our audience with uh, what you do in the accounting talent world, then have a conversation with us. I hope today's episode has been valuable for you. In navigating a little bit more of the aspects of the return to work mandate. Until next time, stay competitive, stay relevant, stay informed.